Today, everyone, I have a very rare and very special opportunity to try three different species of Theobroma side by side. Theobroma cacao is popular worldwide and rightfully so. The seeds of this fruit are processed to make chocolate. However, it also has an edible fruit that tastes good if you can find it. Next up, we have Theobroma bicolor, a fruit that is sometimes found in Central and South America. The seeds of this fruit are consumed roasted and can be processed to make something that is almost, but not quite entirely, unlike chocolate. The fruit of Theobroma bicolor is just as popular as the seeds that are inside it. It can be eaten out of hand or used to make juice. And finally, we have Theobroma grandiflorum, a fruit that is most commonly found in the Amazon. Its seeds are sometimes eaten roasted and they can be made into chocolate, but that's kind of rare. The main way that people use this fruit is to make a juice, and that juice is very popular in the areas that it grows. Even though these three fruits are related to each other, they are very different. I've been lucky enough to have reviewed these on my channel in the past separately, but today, in this very special episode, I will compare them side by side and show you just how unique these three fruits really are. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com and sign up for a free trial today. Today, I have a wonderful and rare opportunity to talk about three different Theobroma species. In order to make chocolate, the seeds of the Theobroma cacao are taken out, they are fermented, they're dried, they're roasted, they're ground, they're mixed with things. There's a whole big process to make chocolate with the seeds of this. But those seeds are surrounded by a fruit, and that fruit is edible. Typically, it's thrown away, but you can actually eat it. So to cut this open might be kind of tricky. It's easiest to smash it against something. So I'm gonna see if I can open it with a knife, and if I can't, we'll take it outside. It's kind of like opening up a watermelon. It's got that sort of rind to it. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may remember that I did an episode where I actually ate the pod. People can eat the pod and have eaten the pod. However, the pod does not taste good. Not at all, but there's uh, been a little bit of effort to try to reduce the waste of the, of the pod. So it's been done. Um, doesn't taste good. There, <laughs> got it. Although this one has so much popularity, there are actually over 20 species of Theobroma. And the ones that are most common out of those, ones that are actually used a lot by uh, some communities around the world, are basically these two. This here is Theobroma grandiflora. The common name for it is Kopuasu. And in the Amazon, the Kopuasu is used to make a drink. They take the flesh of this they mix it with either water or milk and some sugar. And that makes sense because the fruit in this is extremely powerful. It's very, very strong. That's really good. The fruit itself, I think, is like a little bit too big and too much for me to be like eating. But getting it like as a juice where it's like diluted a little bit and like with um, sugar and stuff like that just to kind of like make it a little easier to take, uh, totally. This was very kindly given to me by uh, Don Carlos, who is growing it here in Costa Rica. It does grow here, but it's not easy to find here. You gotta specifically be growing it. It's not really something that you'll find at a market. Now, I'm gonna warn you, <laughs> these little white specks on it, those are boreholes. So some sort of insect has gotten in here. So I might open this up, and it's just gonna be full of insects, and I'm not gonna eat that. And the thing with this one that's different than the other two is that this, the rind on this is a thin, hard shell. So cutting it with a knife does not really do much because there's nothing to cut. More, I'm gonna try to like break it. I'm gonna actually smack it with the back of the knife and see if that'll work. Ah, 
how bad is the bug situation? Uh, not terrible. There are bugs in it, but it seems like they're mostly getting in the rind on the outside and they haven't really gotten into the flesh too much. So I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I'm just gonna have to be careful that I don't eat a bunch of bugs. Get out of here. This is Theobroma bicolor, also known as the Mocambo fruit or Jaguar chocolate. Theobroma bicolor is used for both the fruit and for the seeds. Aztecs actually used to use the seeds to make a chocolate out of it, or a chocolate drink rather, uh, the same way that they would with Theobroma cacao. But when the Spaniards came and tried the, the chocolates of these two, they did not like the bicolor chocolate drink as much as they liked this one. So over time, the chocolate made from this kind of like fell out of fashion. You might find this at a market in Central America, uh, also in Mexico, like um, southern areas of Mexico. Sometimes this does show up, but also not super common. Uh, this, you can find this all over the place. Central America, South America, Mexico, uh, chocolate is produced all around. And uh, even in uh, the US, people are growing this in places like Florida, California. The rind of this is pretty hard. It's harder than the cacao. Let's see what happens with a good whack of a knife. Hardly made a dent. Did you know that I have a web store? It's true. Over at weirdexplorer.com, I sell these guys, uh, Dorian Anatomy shirts, I've got some Mandrake Root shirts, some other stuff, uh, a lot of fun things for sale over there. And you probably think that in order to sell these things, I probably am hiring like some sort of web store service that takes a big cut. Uh, no, no, I do it all by myself, and I do it with Squarespace. I have been a happy customer of Squarespace for over seven years, and what I like about them is that they make it so easy. There's all sorts of web creation tools and development tools and templates and stuff like that, so even if you've never made a website before, you can make a website without too much trouble. Whether it's for a personal page, a blog, a business page, or a web store to sell fruit-related merchandise, check out Squarespace. So head over to squarespace.com to try it for free, and then when you're ready to launch, go to my link, squarespace.com slash weirdexplorer, to get 10% off your first website or domain. On the outside, these are pretty different looking. <laughs> They're all very different from each other, and when you cut them open, they're also pretty different looking. Uh, the cacao here, as you can see, compared to the other two, is not nearly as fleshy. With the Theobroma bicolor, you can see that this thing is completely jammed full. It's like the fruit goes all the way out. It's very fleshy. And the Copua Su, even more so. <laughs> There's like so much flesh and just like a very thin rind to it. These are prized for the seeds inside, and you can see that. So there's a big uh, cavity there for a small amount of fruit. Over people cultivating it, the fruit got smaller, the seeds got stronger, and I think that's what's happened. So I'm just gonna reach in and grab one out. Just a little bit of flesh adhered to the seed. The flavor of that fruit is good. There just isn't a lot of it. It's a little bit tart, three out of 10 on tartness. Not quite an orange, but getting there. It's quite sweet, maybe an eight out of 10 on sweetness. It's got a little bit of like a, like a berry sort of note to it. Maybe a little bit melony. I've had some varieties that tasted more like melons than others. This one tastes more like a berry than a melon. How I see this one 
is more of like a candy because there isn't a lot of flesh there. But just to like put one in your mouth and get that flavor, it's a nice flavor. And also firmly attached to the seat, which I know everyone loves looking at this. So let me give you a nice close up. Um, that flesh is on that seed pretty tight. So you couldn't really chew it if you wanted to. It's just something to kind of like suck on. Like I said, it's kind of like a candy, not so much like a fruit that you'd want for sustenance. But the other cool thing about this seed is that if you bite into this, it is a dark brown, or in this case, a little bit purple, <laughs> randomly, um, on the inside. You can really see how this is used to make chocolate. Kind of looks like chocolate, kind of tastes like chocolate. It's um, kind of like cocoa powder in, in taste. It's got like that kind of bitterness and that kind of flavor. But some people actually take these and they blend them up with like, you know, water, milk, or soy milk, or whatever, and you, know, you can actually have it raw. But I've heard that having it in a large quantity is not a good thing. Okay, next, the Theobroma by color. Definitely more of a substantial fruit. Let's just grab a little hunk out of there. And they, they kind of come out in these little wedges like this, like little triangular wedges. The flavor of these two are nothing like each other. Uh, maybe vaguely, vaguely like each other. Sometimes these have a little bit of a melony taste. Like I said, this one doesn't. This one definitely has a melon-like flavor. It's a very musky tasting fruit. So when you eat it, it kind of gets you in the back of your palate and in your nose a little bit. It's also um, a little bit funky, kind of like a chempedak, which I know is a rare fruit also. And uh, people don't like it when I compare one rare, rare fruit with another rare fruit. To make it more relatable, kind of like jackfruit, Still a little bit rare, but you can find jackfruit now. And jackfruit has a little bit of a funk to it. Chempedak has like a thousand times that funk. This one is um, not as funky as a chempedak, but it's not as mild as a jackfruit. It's like splitting the difference a little bit. You know, I don't like chempedak so much, and I don't like melons so much, but in this sort of balance of those sorts of funky, musky flavors, really works. Really works. I, I do actually like this quite a lot. One interesting thing about the seed of the Theobroma bicolor, the outer bit of this seed is kind of woody, but the kernel on the inside tastes pretty good. It tastes a little bit like almonds. And finally, the Kopu Asu. It looks like just one big mass. You can't really see a little break in it. And it does split into hunks, but it's harder to see just because there's so much flesh it's more like it's almost like fluffy but once you do separate it you can see it also has that little triangular shape to it similar to the bicolor this one smells sour and i remember this being sour when i had it uh, a few years ago uh, another thing that i should point out before i take a bite out of this is that the fruit itself when it's closed up has a scent, a strong scent. It doesn't smell like uh, any kind of fruit that I know of. It's almost like sweaty, savory kind of kind of smell, which is, uh, it's interesting. What does it taste like? It's actually been a long time since I've eaten this, so uh, I don't really remember. I remember it being powerful. Oh, yeah really powerful. There's a reason why people don't really eat this one out of hand. They blend it with milk and that is to reduce that taste. It's a really good flavor, but it's really, really strong. Mmm. The tartness is like, I'd say is like a lemon. It's, it's like that high. It's like 10. I think how I described eating this uh, the first time I had it, was it's like being dragged down a hallway backwards and being smacked in the head with fruit. It's just like this powerful hit of like a pineapple taste and this hit of like a banana taste and then a hit of like a berry taste and then you get this kind of like funky jackfruit kind of taste. 
because all in there it does share similarities with the other two it does have a little bit of the berry like flavor that comes from the cacao and it does have a little bit of that muskiness and jackfruit taste that comes from the um, bicolor but also has more if you want to eat it raw you should do it with a few friends <laughs> because this has a lot a lot of um, flesh to it and a lot of intensity to it so uh, I'm definitely not gonna be able to do this in one sitting I'm gonna be nursing that for a while uh, if the bugs don't finish it before I do I really worked at trying to get the flesh off of the seed and I, I just can't do it it's really really tightly on there um, but you can see that it's kind of a brown color a little bit more similar to the cacao than the bicolor and uh, let's bite through it the inside is white it's also very bitter this one I don't like so much I think maybe if you were to make this into chocolate that bitterness would be a good thing but um, it's a little bit harsh yeah not not quite as nice also it oxidizes you can see there that one is now orange yep I'm taking a bite out of it pretty quickly turned orange which did not happen with the bicolor so I don't know what that means well that's it everybody um, a rare chance to try these three species of theobroma side by side and um, it's so interesting you can see some similarities between these but there are so many differences and how these are used are so different but all three of them are really good and the fact that people don't really eat the flesh of the cacao I think is a shame because it is a tasty fruit you know like sometimes it's better than others but it's like a tasty fruit and the fact that you cannot get kopuasu or bicolor through most of the world when they have such a nice taste to them is is a shame and the fact that the seeds are not more readily available and they're not used to make chocolate there's so much potential with this genus you know there I mean most of the there's a lot of potential that people realize with the cacao but with the other species as well and I hope that I was able to share some of that with you today hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time I would like to give a big shout out to Smarter Every Day, Lofty Rex, and JMac. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon, I'm sure you've heard about it, but basically it is how I can afford to go on all the adventures that I go on on this channel and how I buy all the fruit that I buy. So if you are interested in supporting the channel, check out the link in the description below. Another way to help out is by going to my website. My website has all my videos organized into categories, which is pretty cool, and I also have t-shirts for sale over there. So check it out, and I will see you all next time.